Welcome to the audio video education series. In this series, we will discuss about the popular dilemma of whether one should buy or rent a property. Additionally, we will also be limiting our discussion with respect to the Indian market. I want to do that because rental market is not a global phenomena which is governed by some global parameter. Rental market across the world behaves differently with area. This is because uh, local factors play a very important role in deciding what the rental market is going to be. And because the rental markets are different across uh, the world, it's all the more important that we keep our discussion specific to certain area, which in our case is the Indian market. To put the things in context, let's understand how rental market in India is different than uh, say United States. In the case of India, I take uh, an example from my local area Noida, where the cost of a property, let's say, is about 80 lakhs. And I know that if I have to take this property on a rent, I will have to pay around 18,000 rupees a month. If we calculate the rental yield, which essentially means that uh, the earning I have for one year against the property will be about 2.7%. Uh, and uh, let's say I pick up uh, a property on rent in United States, and I'm not talking about uh, a very high end city here. Uh, maybe we can talk about some mid-level city where the property may be costing around uh, $250,000. I have uh, found that the rental I will have to pay for this property would be around $1,100 a month. And if we calculate the total earning in a year against this property, it will be around 6.2%. So what do we have here? We have on one hand uh, a rental yield in India of a city in Noida uh, hovering around 2.7%. While in United States, uh, the rental yield is around 6.2%. It is not a small difference. We are talking about a good 3.5 to 4% difference here. Now, why is this rental yield so crucial to our discussion? Let's find out. At present, which is around July 2016, the government bond, which is the government of India, 10 years bond, is uh, uh, having a coupon of about 7.5%, uh, whereas the same uh, uh, bond which is also called US Treasury for 10 years is currently giving a coupon of 1.6 percent. Now why we are discussing about government bonds here is because the government bonds interest rate is a good indicator of how the economy is performing and what the interest rates of that economy is. We can very well see that in the case of United States the bonds which are paying a paltry 1.6% is quite easily outpaced by the rental yield one can get on a property. The same is not true with India because the rental yield of about 2.7% is not at all comparable to 7.5% which a guaranteed bond uh, issued by the government can give. So essentially what it tells you is that in India, you are better off investing in bond and receiving a guaranteed interest of 7.5% uh, instead of going for a rental yield, which uh, stands nowhere close to it. To put things in context, if you have 80 lakhs and uh, you invested in property to earn rental, you will be earning 2 lakhs 16,000 in one year which essentially means you will be earning 18,000 rupees a month. On the other hand, if you invested this 80 lakhs into a bond, you will be earning about 6 lakhs rupees a year, which is 50,000 a month. It's obvious, investing in property to earn rent in India is not a good idea. Having said that, let's look at another scenario wherein you do not have 80 lakhs to put in for a property to buy it right away but instead you have the option of going for rent or buying a property through loan. Let's look at this scenario and find out whether it makes sense. 
to buy property on loan uh, which costs you around 80 lakhs rupees you will need to put down down means you will have to actually give a check of 12 lakhs rupees uh, to the developer before you can go to the bank and apply for loan so let's say you do that uh, you will have to apply for a loan amount of 80 lakhs minus 12 lakhs which is 68 lakhs after uh, your loan will be approved you will be uh, going on an EMI so let's assume that this EMI is for 15 years and also assume that the loan that you got was at 10 percent per annum uh, you will see that your estimated monthly installment for buying a property would be about 73,000 rupees on the other hand if you were to go on rent simple rent you will have to pay a rent of uh, 18,000 rupees as we have seen already uh, but also a difference here is that you will now not have to pay any down payment which means that the 12 lakhs rupees you will have to shell out to buy a property on loan in case of rent you will actually not be doing that so let's see what we have here in case of rent you have not bought any property therefore your asset is zero and so is liability because you did not pick up any loan but the rental payout every month is your cash outflow which in this case would be about 18,000 rupees on the other hand in case you bought the property your asset becomes the property itself which is worth 80 lakhs now remember that you also picked up a loan against your asset that becomes your liability which in this case is about 68 lakhs now to pay off the liability you have picked up a rental uh, a monthly EMI of uh, 73,000 that becomes your cash outflow per month so in nutshell what we have is that in case of uh, uh, rent you saved the cash outflow of about 55,000 which is 73,000 EMI uh, minus 18,000 rental that you would have paid and also remember that 12 lakhs that you paid as a down payment for your house is also sitting with you as cash so when you go on rent you have these two cash flows saved which you can easily invest and generate 15 percent plus return so for example if you go for uh, equity investment uh, you can easily get 15 percent return in long run on the other hand if you had bought the property you can probably assume that your property is going to be growing at about 10 percent now why we say that is because if you look at the property appreciation index which is uh, 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 published by national housing bank residex you see that the property has uh, in last 10 years appreciated between 7 to 12 percent so uh, i think in this case it's a good assumption that your property grows at about 10 percent let's see what we will have in our hands after 15 years if you use your calculator as you can easily calculate that the value of your investment in the case of the savings that you would have uh, if you went on rent would be around 4.6 crores which is 46 million rupees uh, after 15 years the same in the case of property which is growing at 10 percent would be equivalent to about 3.3 crores which is about rupees 33 million rupees this is important because we do not really realize that the long term property rates or the, the, the price appreciation of property is not exactly as much as we perceive it to be. So therefore even if we grow at 10% it cannot possibly catch up with the growth that you would have in case you invest the savings into a good scheme that can potentially earn you much more than the appreciation of your property. So let's see what we have discussed in this video. We have seen that the rental yield in India is abysmally low. It's not at all comparable to the bond rate or the interest rate that we see in the bank. We have also seen that investing in real estate for the purpose of earning rent is not a good decision. What we have also seen that because the rental yield in India is so low it might actually be a good idea to live on rent and uh, use the proceed of the savings because you are living on rent in investing something else which could be more profitable than buying a property so therefore 
if you look at the typical statistics of how you can save more and you can earn more, it may be much more beneficial for you to live on rent than to buy your property.